good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we're taking another look back at a ship that is quite old, and today's subject is the Tier 6 Premium American Battleship, the Arizona. Now, after playing Texas for yesterday's video, kind of went on a nostalgia trip and also broke out the Arizona to see how she does in today's World of Warships. This is quite an old premium ship. She was released on July 4th, I believe, for 2016, right before I started playing the game. I remember watching videos in the Arizona, and there was quite the fuss about whether or not the ship should be in-game or not, given that she was bombed in, of course, the attacks on Pearl Harbor, and one of her magazines went off, killing, of course, many, many, many crew members on board. But just like I thought back then, it's a piece of history, it's really cool seeing the ship in-game, being able to interact with her, and also get people interested in history, of course, too. It, it's that's that's one of the big things about this game that's so cool. And you see these ships that you hear about, read about, see on TV all the time, from of course like Pearl Harbor with the Arizona to the Hood and the Bismarck with the Hunt for Bismarck and stuff. And you get to play with it in game and interact with it. I think it's a very good way to get people involved, especially younger people that normally wouldn't even really care about this type of stuff. Anyway. So, the Arizona, she's, shoot, uh, six years old. She'll be six years old this ju this July 4th. Good God. And she's still available to pick up for, I believe, around $26 US in the premium shop at this moment. But would you want to do that on a six-year-old premium ship? I think you would, especially in the Arizona's case, because she has something that is pretty darn rare today, in that she doesn't have a gimmick at all. The last time we got a ship without a gimmick was, I believe, the Flandre, the Tier 8 Premium Fridge BB, which is, shoot, again, a rarity today. The Flandre is just a solid Tier 8 battleship with some thicker upper armor. The Arizona is a solid Tier 6 battleship that's essentially a New Mexico, but with higher Sigma, a little bit longer load time on the guns, and lower AP damage. But not by too much, and we'll take an in-depth look at all that right here, right now. So, again, this ship can be infinitely compared to the New Mexico. They both have 12 14-inch guns at Tier 6. They have a similar armor scheme and similar performance in terms of speed and, maneuver and maneuverability, with the Arizona coming out on the lower side of this in most cases. So the big difference between the Arizona and the New Mexico is their Sigma. The New Mexico has a Sigma of 1.5, which is quite low, but again, this is a Tier 6 battleship with 12 14-inch guns. 14-inch guns aren't massive by Tier 6 standards. There's quite a few 15-inch battleships at Tier 6 now, but having 12 of them is a big deal. Now, 1.5 Sigma is, of course, the balancing factor for that ship, but for the Arizona, you get 1.8 Sigma. Now, do make no mistake here, this is still a tier 6 battleship, and the dispersion is still very much tier 6 battleship dispersion. It is American battleship dispersion, though, so it's generally a bit nicer than the other battleships, and you do tend to hit your targets a lot more, especially with the Arizona and her 1.8 Sigma. But one major downside of the Arizona is her 35 second reload time on the main battery guns. And this is a tier 6 battleship, so there's no way you can speed that up at all, except with, of course, adrenaline rush. So, you get a long reload time on those guns, and you also have a 60 second 180 time on the guns, but again, the uh, New Mexico does suffer from that as well. But I am running Halsey on my Arizona. The stats we're going to go over are with him equipped on the Arizona. Now, let's start with her armor. Her armor is an all-or-nothing design. She does have 26 millimeters of bow armor and she's generally coated in 26 as well. So other 14 inch gun battleships you can just laugh at them and not really care too much as long as you are sufficient, sufficiently angled. And again 14 inch and below of course too. Which there's quite a few 14 inch or smaller ships you will run into. Especially being top tier in the Arizona you run across of course a lot of tier 5 ships. And with the way matchmaking is like we talked about a few days ago with tier 6 ships, they're generally top tier more often than not. 
And even if you are in like a tier seven game with the Arizona, you've got range. That's something that that's something that the New, that the New Mexico does not have. If you take the special American artillery plotting room mod one, you get an eighteen was eighteen yeah eighteen point six kilometer base range that you can push out to around twenty two kilometers with the spotter, with one point eight sigma, which means at longer ranges. You're hurtling just, you know, 12, 14 inch shells of pure pain onto enemy ships at tier 6 and tier 7. 22 kilometers range is more than enough to hang in at tier 7. Now, the guns are the 45 caliber 14 inch guns, not the 50 caliber 14 inch guns that the New Mexico gets. So, the shell velocity is a little bit slower and it's just like what we talked about before with American BB shell velocity, it's slow, so at ranges, which the Arizona does have a lot of, you have to put quite the lead on them, and that can, of course, give the enemy ship plenty of time to maneuver. But generally, when you're fighting Tier 6 and Tier 7 battleships, you can dunk on them pretty hard. Again, Tier 6 battleship with Tier 6 battleship dispersion, so you do have to expect that. But again, that 1.8 Sigma means that your shells are coming out quite, quite tightly grouped compared to the New Mexico. And you'll see plenty of that in the background. HE, her HE shells do 5,000 da maximum damage. They have a 30% chance of causing a fire on the target, which is actually pretty high, but again, 35 second reload time. And they come out the tubes at 800 834 meters a second. The AP does a maximum damage of 10,300. The New Mexico, I believe, does 10,500. And then the Fuso, which also has 14 inch guns, if you want, ring, does 10,200. So it's a couple hundred less than the New Mexico, but you're more than likely going to hit more shells on target. So it makes up for it in that regards. Secondary guns, this is the Arizona and her 1940 refit. So you've, you've got eight single mounted 127s, then you've got 10 hull mounted um, 127s as well. They are currently out to a range of 5.5 um, kilometers base. This is not a secondary ship, don't build into it. I mean like, in the match you're watching in the background, they actually come in fairly useful in the background right now. One of her bigger weaknesses is her AA. She has an AA rating of 42, but oddly has a longer range than Texas. She can get her AA out to 4.8 kilometers, which is interesting. The eight single mounted 127s uh, do count as dual purpose AA, if you're wondering, but her um, damage per second is like, it's, it's like a 70 something or maybe in the hundreds. But it's, it's not an A, but by any stretch of the imagination. Maximum speed, she goes 22.1 knots for the speed flag. She has a 640 meter turning circle radius and a 14 second, 14.6 second rudder shift time. Concealment, you can get her down to 12.6 with the commander skill. And she gets a US BB hill spotter plane and that nice US damage con that runs for 22 seconds. So you've got quite a tough ship here and again it's just a good old-fashioned battleship with some guns slightly more accurate guns than the tech line ship a ship that's got a nice set of armor on it that doesn't have any type of consumable uh, consumable or some other random gimmick to it it's just an all-around solid tier 6 battleship that will do you quite well in random battles Again, that extra range bonus and the ability to actually hit stuff at that range with the improved Sigma is a huge pickup for the Arizona. It's so nice to be able to actually reach out past where the New Mexico can and put shells down range. Now, of course, it gets a tier 6 ship. You do have American battleship shell flight time, which is, shoot, the maximum range is like, I think, 12 seconds, which if you're fighting against something like a cruiser, it's probably going to be able to get out of the way. But again, when you're slugging it out with other battleships at tier 6 and tier 7, it's nice to be able to hit them at that range where the New Mexico cannot do that. Now, the Arizona as well, if you're wondering about uh, permanent camos, what I'm running on it right, uh, right now is the alternative camo that you get for, I believe, doing um, Halsey's missions, I do believe. 
This is a kind of great White Fleet esque camo. At least I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be. I mean, Arizona wasn't in that. She wasn't built <laughs> yet by any stretch of the imagination. But you can of course flip it for the more traditional uh, camo. But I, I like this one. It's nice, uh, great, great White Fleet esque camo that I do enjoy. So the Arizona, it's an all-around, a really solid tier 6 premium battleship you can pick up for about $27. This is actually a great American battleship trainer. You will be putting the exact same commander skills on your commanders that you will be putting on either the mainline American battleships or the uh, American battleship split tree. She's great for that. And if you are looking at doing the battleship split, this ship plays just like that, but it's in a much better situation for its tier than those ships are. So if you want to know what it's like playing those ships, just pick up the Arizona and get blasting away from quite some range away. But again, a wonderful ship, tough ship, no gimmicks, really kept up throughout the years. And I'm so glad that a historical ship like the Arizona has been able to do that, unlike the Texas, which we looked at yesterday with her AA gimmick being essentially killed off in a single patch. So guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and leave a comment. And also subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 35,000 subs. We just passed 34,000, or was it 33,700 a few days ago. And I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful Tuesday and have a wonderful week. And I hope to catch you guys in the next one.